Hello, this is a finger rigging tutorial by Nathan Webb. I'm going to be using the Andy mesh for the arm. To start off with, we have a basic arm rig, but no finger controls. So we're going to add joints into the hand, and we're going to use set driven key to get the fingers to curl and to spread. So first, let's see what we have here. We have a basic orient constraint set up for the shoulder the elbow, and the wrist. I'm going to add joints to the hand for each finger and the thumb, and then skin it. We want our joints to be in a row for the fingers, so I'm going to go to Skeleton, Joint Tool, and then I'll hold the Shift button and click four times for the finger joints. and then hit the enter button. The joints show up really large so you can go over to the channel editor and make the radius smaller. If you select all the joints for the fingers and do that it'll make all of them small. That's a good size. We want to rename them so I'll go to modify search and replace names and change joint in the index and hit apply. Now let's move our joint to where the finger is. We can also turn on wireframe on shaded so we can see the geometry that we're going to be deforming. I'll line this up to the finger. That's too large for the finger so we can make sure our transform tool is set to local and we can translate the finger joints back in X so they fit the hand nicely. We want to move the finger joints so they're spread out evenly along the index finger and the last one is just going to be at the very end. We also have to look in 3D space. Right now our joints are going to be on the floor so I'm going to move them up to the finger. There we go, that fits nicely. And then we can just duplicate this joint and have it fit each finger. So hit Control D, move it over, rotate it, and get it to line up for the middle finger. Maybe you have to move the joints a little bit to get them to fit if your character's fingers are a little different size. While we're at it, we can delete this joint at the end of the hand because that's not going to do anything. I'll change this one to be the middle finger. I'm going to change index to middle. And we'll do that for each set of joints for each finger. Control D to duplicate. This one will be your ring finger. Maybe I want the fingers to bend more at the knuckle. So I could have them start over here a little bit. going to change middle to ring, hit apply. Last but not least is the pinky finger. This one's quite a bit shorter, so we need to adjust the joints to fit. change ring to pinky and hit apply. Now we should check in 3D space to see if the joints are properly spaced in the geometry. Looks like I need to move my pinky down in Y so it's in the middle. There we go. Looks like I need to change my ring finger down as well 
I recommend putting the joints in the middle and Y space of your finger. Maybe we want to have the joints. You can see in this model, there's extra geometry here for each bend for the joints. So I'm going to move the joints right there. And double check on my index finger. See if it lines up. The last one we need to duplicate is for the thumb. The thumb's a little trickier. I'm going to duplicate this, and it depends on how you model your thumb, but you can use the same number of joints, but your thumb rotates in the inside part of your hand more. So I'm going to rotate it to fit, and also in this bit of geometry, the thumb is modeled out of 45 degree angle so your thumbnail would be here so if I bend it into a fist it would rotate in this way I want all my joints to rotate in the x-axis so it rotates inward like this but my thumb if I rotate it in the x-axis it would rotate down I want it to rotate in alignment with where your fingernail would be so I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it about 45 degrees in the x-axis so it lines up with the geometry and the y-axis of the bones would point out towards where your, your fingernail or thumbnail would be. And if I rotate this down, that would rotate inward like I'm making a fist. Then I want to check to see where my joints are in a comparison to the geometry. So I want to move this one for the tip of your finger down over there. That looks good. The last thing we'll do is rename this. Modify, search and replace names, index for thumb. So those are all the joints for my hand. And for a simple rig, we could just take each chain, thumb, pinky, ring, middle, and index, and parent them to the wrist. More complicated rigs will have some joints in the middle of your hand so you can do things like cupping. Now that we have the joints in the hand, let's go ahead and skin the the arm geometry to the joint so we can see what the joints are doing. So I'm going to pick the arm geometry and then I'm going to pick my root joint. I'll go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind and for just an arm two influences will be enough but if you do a whole character I recommend using three then hit apply. Now let's take a look to see how our hand works. We can still bend our wrist here and if we grab our fingers and curl them inward, we should see the fingers curling nicely. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. It's a good idea to model your hands with your fingers splayed out with space in between your fingers. That way you don't get any weird smearing where your index finger might be moving the geometry of the middle finger or other fingers like that. Let's add a controller now to add attributes to so we can curl the fingers. We don't want to actually have to just pick these bones and curl them ourselves. We want to have an easier way of animating. Now that we have the joints in the hand, let's go ahead and skin the, the arm geometry to the joint so we can see what the joints are doing. So I'm going to pick the arm geometry and then I'm going to pick my root joint. I'll go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind. And for just an arm, two influences will be enough. But if you do a whole character, I recommend using three. Then hit apply. 
Now let's take a look to see how our hand works. We can still bend our wrist here. And if we grab our fingers and curl them inward, we should see the fingers curling nicely. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. It's a good idea to model your hands with your fingers splayed out with space in between your fingers. That way you don't get any weird smearing where your index finger might be moving the geometry of the middle finger or other fingers like that. Let's add a controller now to add attributes to so we can curl the fingers. We don't want to actually have to just pick these bones and curl them ourselves. We want to have an easier way of animating.